Hey guys, my name is Danny Burke. This is Most Amazing Top 10, and we're the channel that brought you such classic space videos as the top 10 incredible moments in space over here. And also, well actually I think that's, that's pretty much the only space videos we've done on this channel, but that's gonna change today. Space is a pretty big place. Humans still really don't know much about it, and it seems to surprise and shock us every single year. So let's talk about some of those right now as we jump into the top 10 strangest space discoveries. All right, kicking things off now, at number 10, we've got a diamond planet. In 2012, astronomers announced that a planet they had known about for a while, called 55 Canary E, was made out of diamond. Well, at least a third of it was. Scientists were shocked because this was the first rocky planet that wasn't covered in granite and water. They actually think its surface is made up of graphite and diamonds as far as the eye could see. Its radius is almost twice that of Earth, so if scientists are right about this, that's a whole lot of bling bling. And if you want to get your hands on some, it's only about 40 light years away and with our current technology, that would only take you about 860,000 years to get there. Roughly. I still think there are diamond obsessed people out there who would be totally down for that journey. All right, moving on to number nine now, we have tarigrades. In 1773, Johann Goes discovered a microscopic animal called tarigrades. Now, these one millimeter creatures are insanely tough. They've been dragged to the highest mountains, the deepest oceans, and every hot and cold climate you can think of, and they just don't die. They refuse to. Oh, and if you try and starve or dehydrate them, well, good luck. They can live for at least 30 years without food or water. Scientists were like, this. What even are these things? Let's take them into space. Surely, surely they can't survive in space, right? So they dehydrated some of them and took them into space in 2007 and exposed them to the vacuum of space and its intense radiation that would kill a human like me or you in about a minute. They did this for about 10 days and when they took them back to Earth and hydrated them again, they were pretty much fine. They were just okay. The majority of them just woke up and carried on like nothing had happened. And if this discovery wasn't so fascinating, it would be annoying. They're kind of annoyingly tough. Maybe it's both. Maybe they're fascinatingly annoying. All right, next up at number eight, we have got the wow signal. Wow. On August 15th, 1977, astronomer Jerry Emmon was monitoring a radio telescope at the SETI project, which stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So he was basically looking for aliens. After years of signals that didn't seem to be alien at all, everything changed on this day. Jerry noticed on the telescope printout that there was a huge spike of a signal that was unlike anything they had ever seen. And stronger than anything they'd ever recorded. It lasted for a full 72 seconds. Jerry was astounded and quickly circled it with a red pen and wrote wow next to it. As news of the signal from space started to spread around the world, it became known as the wow signal. Everybody went crazy and obviously started talking about aliens right away. They found where the signal came from in space. They located it, an area in the Sagittarius constellation, and they listened again and again and again and again but nothing. They tried more than 50 times to pick up any signal at all. People around the world have actually been pointing their telescope to this place in the stars ever since then, but it's just been total silence. Now, some say it was aliens. Some say it was the reflection of an Earth-based signal, but for many people, we'll never really know what the wow signal really was. And you know what? That's still pretty cool. All right, moving on to number seven now, let's talk about space alcohol. Now, in 1995, scientists discovered Sagittarius B2, a very distant and very massive cloud of alcohol. Yeah, billions of liters of the stuff is just floating out there in an area about 1,000 times the size of our own solar system. It's insanely huge. They analyzed all the data and found that the cloud contained ethyl formate. That's a substance that gives raspberries their flavor and rum its smell. So essentially, this cloud would kind of taste of raspberry and smell like rum, apparently. But before you guys start picturing these huge floating galaxies of raspberry cocktails and Jamaican rum, most of it is not drinkable alcohol. It's made mainly of methanol. And that's the same thing you find in polish and windshield washer fluid. So you don't want to drink that. Scientists think it formed when ethyl alcohol got caught up in the creation of a new star. It boiled and separated into this gas cloud. And they're excited because these complex organic molecules are rare to find in outer space and could be our best bet yet for finding life somewhere out there. But personally, I'm excited because, yeah, there's kind of a massive raspberry rum space cocktail waiting for me somewhere out there. 
Okay, at number six, now we have asteroid rings. Now, if I told you to picture something in space with rings around it, you'd probably say Saturn. Uranus also has them. Even Jupiter and Neptune have slightly visible ones. But in 2014, out beyond Saturn, scientists found an asteroid known as Chariklo with two thin rings around it. This totally shocked astronomers because up until that point, they had presumed that only huge things like those planets we mentioned could have rings around them, not tiny little asteroids. It's kind of like presuming that only massive fat guys can be sumo wrestlers and then finding a tiny baby that's wrestling with the best of them. Like, whoa, 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 aren't you a tiny bit small for that? In fact, astronomers think that Chariklo got its rings from debris left over after a massive collision and that they might have been formed with the help of a tiny moon. What's going on? Apparently asteroids now have rings around them and they have their own moons apparently and pretty soon they'll probably have drive throughs and Facebook and Matthew McConaughey. All right, moving on to number five now, we have a rogue planet. Now in 2012, scientists found CFBDSIR2149. Yeah, I think that might be his nickname. It's about 100 light years away from our own solar system and it does not orbit any other star. It's just drifting through deepest, darkest space, all by itself. It's also massive. They think it's between four to seven times the mass of Jupiter. I think it's kind of scary to picture being on a planet that is just floating through the absolute darkness of outer space. No daytime, just constant night. Although it wasn't the first rogue planet the scientists think they've found, it is the closest one to us that we know of. Because of this, they could narrow its age down to between 50 to 120 million years, and they think it has a temperature of about 400 degrees Celsius. Now it is one of the better known rogue planets, but scientists do think there could be billions of them out there just drifting in the darkness. All right, coming in number four now, we have planet HD 189733b. Again, I think that might be its nickname. It's about 63 light years away. It looks quite nice, doesn't it? It's got a very nice blue hue to it. Well, that's not a blue ocean you guys are seeing. It's a massive gas giant. It's very hot. Only one side of it ever faces its star, and uh, it rains liquid glass sideways at over 7,000 kilometers an hour. Huh? Oh yeah, it rains liquid glass at 7,000 kilometers an hour sideways. So the planet is just 4.6 million kilometers away from its own star, which is very close. In fact, the pull on the planet is so strong that it's tidally locked, which means it cannot turn at all. One side is always facing the star, the other is always darkness. Now this causes very hot winds of a thousand degrees Celsius to whip from one side to the other, which causes silicate particles there to condense into small drops of glass that rain down, and they're then whipped sideways at over 7,000 kilometers an hour. It's very cool, but uh, I don't think we should move there. I'm, I'm quite good here. All right, at number three now, we've got the Great Red Spot. Now look at this image of Jupiter. It's very recognizable, and I'm sure you guys recognize this, the Great Red Spot. But a lot of people don't realize that it's actually a massive storm the size of three planet Earths that has been raging for at least a few hundred years. In fact, we aren't really sure how long it's been going at all. It was first observed scientifically in 1879, but there have been reports of it going way back to 1664. Everyone has been pretty amazed by this. Think of the size of our planet and every piece of land and ocean and person in it. The whole thing could fit three times into this single storm that has been going on for hundreds of years. It could even be longer, but we just couldn't see it. And for all this time we've been observing it, we still don't really know why it's still there. From what we know about storms here on Earth, they eventually do disappear. But the Great Red Spot seems to be feeding off other tiny storms and getting new energy delivered to it to just keep going and going. Oh, and also scientists are still trying to figure out why it's even red in the first place. Yeah, they don't really know. So next time you guys think that zit on your face is the biggest mystery spot in the universe, don't worry. Uh, the Great Red Spot is a lot stranger. Okay, next up at number two, we have the Super Void. Now, we've talked a lot about strange things out there in space, but what about strange nothings? Well, in 2015, astronomers announced the discovery of a massive area of the universe, about 1.8 billion light years across, with, well, 
nothing in it, really. In an area that size, they expected to find about 10,000 galaxies, but they just weren't there. And technically, this place shouldn't even exist. Now, although there is some matter there, scientists never expected to find an area so big with so little. And what I find strange as well is that even though this super void is mainly just nothing, it is something, just like a hole is a thing. In fact, one scientist described this object of nothingness as possibly the largest individual structure ever identified by humans. And it just adds to the argument that we know nothing. Well, I know nothing, you know, but scientists also know nothing. But at least we know we know nothing. Alright guys, we've reached the end now, and finally at number one, we have the sound of the Big Bang. Now in 1964, two astronomers called Robert W. Wilson and Arno A. Panzias were picking up a lot of odd buzzing noises coming from the hold male horn antenna where they were working. It seemed to come from all parts of the sky around them, all day and all night, non-stop. They tried to get rid of it by tuning their instruments and you know, correcting it, and at one point they thought it was being caused by two pigeons that had nested in the actual antenna and were pooping everywhere. But after they had cleaned out the poop and tried everything, the noise was still there all the time. Eventually, they realized that they were actually hearing cosmic microwave background radiation. That's the echo of the Big Bang. What they were essentially hearing was the leftover noise from the birth of the actual universe. Light from that event had been traveling across the universe for so long and so far that it had eventually become radio waves that were everywhere. Now some of the static you see on your TV when you turn it on in between channels is that very same thing. Robert and Arno won a Nobel Prize for confirming the Big Bang theory. Although some people think it could still have been pigeon poop. Maybe. Well guys, that's all we've got for you in this one. I do hope it was strange and spacey enough for you. If it was, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up. That would be amazing. And if you love space, then do make yourself heard down there below in the comments section. What other space type videos do you want us to make here on Most Amazing Top 10? Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on our daily videos here on this channel. My name is Danny Burt. You can find me on Instagram somewhere down there. And I'll see all you lovely people in a bit.